Good afternoon. Welcome into the house of the Lord. King David said, I was glad when they said unto me, come, let us go to the house of the Lord. And I can come into an agreement with that. I am glad when we come into the house of the Lord. And I'm glad when you come into the house of the Lord too, because when you come in with me, it builds a strengthening. I can feel the strength when we come in together. And that's what we're doing here. It's important to know what we are doing together in this spirit. We are building strength. So in this place, at this time, this is the prophetic class. So we are building a strengthening. We are a company of prophetic people. And what does what exactly are we doing here? We're not, I mean, we're learning, we're understanding, we're growing, and that's important. All of that is really important, but it's important also to go a little bit higher. So in Revelation 1, 4, it said there was an invitation. There was a door that opened and there was a voice that came to John, the revelator, as he was on the island of Patmos. And there was an a invitation to go higher. Come up here. I want to show you some things. So that invitation is here for us. Come up higher. We want to go higher. We want to go into a higher place and we want to under we want to have some understanding. We want to have some wisdom. So it's important when we come into the house of the Lord, why are we glad? Why am I glad when we come into the house of the Lord together? Because I feel the unity, the power of unity. It's I, I love to be with God's people, but there is something that happens spiritually when we are together there's something that happens in the spirit realm when there's a company of prophetic people i want you to have some understanding so that when somebody says what are you doing there i always tell you well you could be doing a lot of things on sunday afternoon i mean you could be mowing your lawn you could be going to the grocery store. We can make a list of a million things you could be doing on Sunday, but you need to be understanding what are we doing here because it builds strength. It's a weapon of warfare when you know what you're doing and when you're meeting with God's people. Why are we building a company of prophetic people? Because it says in 1 Samuel 13, now this is God's idea not mine. We're building a company of prophetic people. And in 1 Samuel 13, that's what they were doing. And we see this, this standard set all the way through the Bible. But in 1 Samuel 13, they actually built a school for the prophet and the sons of the prophets. So that's the students of the prophets. They're not, they weren't all prophets, but they were people that came together and wanted to learn. They were going to learn the prophetic way. They were going to sit under the prophets. Some of them were prophets, but they were actually building a house and they borrowed a tool. They borrowed an ax and the ax had fell in the river and they went to the prophet and they to Elisha and they said that ax had fell in the river and it wasn't even ours. We borrowed it. It was like, oh great. I mean, I, I can feel their pain. And he took, the prophet took a stick and threw it in the river and the ax head came up and floated. And we can read that and go, that is an amazing miracle because that is not the way you get an ax head out of a river. You don't throw a stick in and it doesn't come up, but that we know that that's a miracle. But that's a prophetic understanding for us. That's the power of anointing. When the prophetic anointing comes in, it draws things up to the surface, right? When there's a powerful anointing like that, we see things pulled to the surface. We see it in, in services, right? When there's a, a powerful enough anointing, it will start pulling things up, right? It will pull things up that need to be delivered in us. We can start feeling it. I can see it in services. As the anointing comes in, I can see things that need God is going to take care of. We can see somebody start even start manifesting. That's okay. We want to see that. God wants to take care of that. That's the anointing. We have heard the anointing that breaks the yoke, right? Will come in and that thing comes up to the surface. 
Good things come up to the surface. Well, that's what we're doing here. We are building a company of prophetic people. And when we come in together, we bring our anointings in together. Every believer has a deposit from the Holy Spirit. That's the blessing of the new covenant. We have the deposit of the Holy Spirit. So we come in together and in the power of unity, we become strong people and we, we become that one that pulls things up to the surface, right? We become powerful people. That's what we want to do as the, it gets dark out there. We want to become light and we want to become what the word says, the remedy for those living in great darkness they have seen a great light. So we, be, we are becoming strong in the Lord. That's why I am glad when they said, come, let us go to the house of the Lord. Because I know when I come in here, I'm going to meet with God's people and we are going to co-mingle. Iron sharpens iron. That's what the word of God says. So I'm going to meet with my fellow believers and we are going to become stronger together in uni unification. Amen. One of the ways we do that is during worship. We become strong together as we lift one sound and we go into the courts of heaven. We lift a sound together. We, we can worship together and break chains off of each other. I just released this word yesterday, but God brought it back to me today. And I want to release this over you because it's fresh, because God, the Holy Spirit is staying on it. We become strong together when we worship and live co corporately worship together. There's a strength in it. You can worship at home. And I pray and hope and encourage that you are worshiping at home. Worship is who we are. We are worshipers. But when we come in together into the house of God and we do it together, there's a strength in it. Paul and Silas in the book of Acts were in prison and they began to lift a sound so strong it broke the chains off of everybody in that prison and it brought a household salvation for the one that was watching over their captivity. That's what we do when we worship together. When I worship next to you, I can worship with you. And when we worship, we can together release a sound before the Lord that will bring this one or that one out of captivity. I may not need a miracle today. Maybe somebody else in the house does. But as we together lift a sound. It brings us strength. That's what we're doing in this house. So this morning, as I was in prayer, the Lord brought that back again. And he said to me, and if you have your Bibles, turn to them. It's something worthy of writing down. God so often speaks to me out of the date. I don't know if anybody else gets that, but I, I'm a numbers person and I'll write the date down in my journal and I'll say, God, what are you saying about the numbers in today? And I'll hear the Holy Spirit. And this is what he said about today. He said, Second Chronicles 20. And then he pointed to 2022. And he said, now when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set an ambush. He, the Lord set ambushes against the people of Ammon, Moab and Mount Seir, who would come against Judah, and they were defeated. And he highlighted now when they began to sing and to praise. It moved him. It moved him to bring a defeat against the enemies. And once again, the Lord brought a reminder and wanted me to remind you, praise and worship together for the power of unity to see your fellow brothers and sisters come up out of captivity and for the community as well. So that's what we're doing in here. I want you to have understanding. Understanding is those tools. I would say you got a toolbox. Please know what your tools in your in your toolbox are for. We're getting we got free when Jesus Christ set us free on the cross 2000 years ago. Amen. But our job is to maintain our freedom. 
And so how you maintain your freedom is knowing what's available to you and also being able to use your freedom tools. And that's not so easy sometimes. Not everybody was raised knowing that. But we have to understand. We got to have some understanding. So that's what we're doing here. So one of your weapons of warfare or your power tools is knowing unity, coming in together and worshiping. And we're building a strength as a company of prophetic people in every single one of you, because this is a question people ask. I'm not sure if I'm a prophetic person. Well, who in here, and you got to raise your hand, and even at home, raise your hand, who is born again, identified with the blood of Jesus Christ, blood purchased by his, by the blood. Yes, that's you. You have a deposit from the Holy Spirit. Therefore, you are a prophetic person. You might just need to have that fl fanned into f uh, a flame a little bit more or have some understanding. That's what we're doing here. So let's just lift our hands here. A lot's being released, and you can picture it as seeds, okay? Like we're throwing seeds over you. So if you, when you put your hands up like this, that puts you in the receiving position. And you're going to hear me say almost every time I talk, a lot of times with the prophetic, you, it can be taught, but a lot of times it's just caught, meaning like something's going to go down in your spirit, man, and you're going to remember it. The Lord will bring it back to you. So put when you put your hands up just say i receive it and the holy spirit will help you okay so last time we met together we talked about how to hear we're, we're always going to talk about how to hear god's voice how to recognize god's voice how to get more intimate with him how to grow in in that area and the lord was bringing us to matthew 6 6 where jesus said when you pray, go into your room, shut the door, and talk to your father, and then the, the father will reward you in the secret place. And we stayed on that. When you pray, cultivate a time of prayer. Cultivate. Make it a daily discipline. Make it a lifestyle. When you pray, that means having conversation with God, going back and forth. When you pray, some people were raised, when you pray means it just goes one way. I just pray like this, never expecting to hear anything back. I shared a little bit of my own personal experience of how developing a prayer life actually brought um, miracle experiences to me and has set me free in literally every area of my life. Uh, how to pray the word. And we're going to stay on that a little bit more. How to pray the word. When you pray, pray the word of God. Jesus Christ is the word. Jesus Christ is the word. When you pray the word, you encounter the living word. You start having supernatural experiences with the living word. So we're going to talk a little bit about that today. And we have a blessing in the house. We have Natasha Miller. And I asked her to come in. She was, some of you have experienced her um, prophetic teaching. She was here about, I, I believe, maybe a month ago and ministered um, in her anointing, that anointing that she carries. But she, I would say, she's really an expert on how to pray the word and encounter Jesus through the word. And as I was praying for you and what God really wanted for each one of you and how to bring power into your life so that you can encounter, I know you want to encounter the Lord. I know you want to encounter supernatural experiences from the Holy Spirit. The Lord brought Natasha to my mind and said, have her come in. And as she speaks, she's going to release, she releases his presence and supernatural tools. These are power tools for you to equip you to be strong in the Lord and then to be able to hear his voice on a higher level like I know that you're longing to do. So we're going to welcome Natasha. Amen. Hallelujah. It is such an honor to be here when um, Leslie and I met for lunch and she shared the vision that she has, 
you know, for this group and for this time, I just was, oh, the Lord's, you know, how the Lord kind of stirs you up on the inside. And, um, and as we kind of sat there, we definitely knew this was going to be about praying the word, you know, and the power of, of praying the word. But was interesting is as I began praying, which, you know, I encourage in, in all situations, I mean, I end up praying and asking the Lord um, for parking spaces, you know, for just for little things. And I remember as an unsaved um, college uh late young woman, um, I got invited to my first Bible study class and I thought everybody was nuts because they were talking about how God get them, got them, you know, parking spaces and, you know, shopped with them or, or, you know, did all these things. And I was like, uh, can someone just pray for world peace? You know, like, so I, I had a really bad attitude toward it in the whole it, it was bad, but, you know, praise the Lord, you know, after I got saved, I got to be even, you know, more intense than them. Like we can pray and interact with our father and communicate about the little itty bitty things and then the really grandiose decisions. And I knew today that, you know, this was a, a very um, important sacred time that that the Lord really wanted to speak something that's going to resonate with all of you. And so I prayed, <laughs> you know, and I went about my day. I want to let you know that when you pray, it doesn't necessarily you'll get the answer then. But what you do is you have so much faith that God's going to answer you. That I said, Lord, thank you for what you want me to share. And I went about my day and weeks. And then the Lord a lot of times it happens when I'm in the kitchen, all of a sudden the Lord gave me a vision, okay? And um, so I wanna share that with you just so many times you'll pray and the Lord has an answer for you, but wait in faith, don't compromise. I'm gonna go, uh, this is just a side testimony I feel the Lord wants me to share with you guys. But um, when, I, when I was pregnant for, with my first child, and it happened with my second child too, but with my first child, I was like, Lord, you know, in the Bible, you name people. Like you give people names. So I was like, I, I spoke to my husband and we became in agreement and we were like, you know, we're gonna ask the Lord for his name for our, our child. And um, so we held hands and we prayed, Lord, thank you. This, it's in your word that you name people. And so we will like your name for our child. And the name didn't come the first week, the second week after we prayed, third week, no. It was about two weeks before I could give birth. All of a sudden, you know, I, I'm in it and I'm, I'm actually taking a shower and I'm, I'm talking with the Lord. And I'm like, Lord, I wasn't talking to the wall. You know, I've not been standing in faith to like an idol, you know, built of man's hands. This is, I'm talking to the, the heavenly father and you say this in your word. I said, you know what? We're gonna just gonna call her the child. I said, we're gonna call her the child and I'm gonna give birth and I was giving birth at a um, birthing center so I knew I could forget my official papers if I needed to. And I was like, we're just gonna call her the child and you're gonna name her and I don't care how long it takes. And um, that night he gave me a dream. And in the dream, I'm holding a, a, a girl who's blonde and both my husband and I are dark haired. And she has long blonde hair and she speaks to me and she says, river of love. Okay, so my first reaction was, she's going to be a genius, like literally. <laughs> and then I wake up, you know. And, um, and so I, I forget about it until the next morning I turn on, you know, the, the, the light switch to the bathroom. And I was like, whoa, wait, the dream, wait. Names kind of go with anointings. And I, I said, wait, Lord, did you just give me the name for my daughter? And knowing this, in every time God communicates, and even with what he communicated today, it's an unpacking. It's an honor for us to unpack what God communicates, whether it's a dream, whether it's a vision, whether it's, you know, scripture, you know, however he does it, it will all line up with scripture. 
but it's our honor to unpack it. There's a mystery. Sometimes if we just take whatever God gives us at face value, we're not going to go to the depth of where he wants us to go in him. And so, sure, I could have just named a river of love, but no, God wanted me to go deeper. And so, long story short, river of love is in the Bible. And it is actually the river of Ahava. Ahava means love. And it is the river that Nehemiah fasted and consecrated himself at with the the people of Israel when they went back to build the wall around Jerusalem. It is also the same river that Ezra and his crew had to fast and consecrate themselves at and cross over in order to, they started the temple, they didn't finish it. Interesting enough, my calling that she was referring to is building people as houses of prayer, which is based on Haggai, which is basically I had to give birth to my child and walk through, cross over through that river of love, which she is so named. And that's where I got my calling after I stepped through all of that. So that's for somebody here, right? Sometimes the Lord has us in faith. I just asked for a name for my child and, and, and God unraveled a whole destiny that now that I'm walking in. So, and also at that point, I started repenting before the Lord because honestly, I, I get, i I was getting dreams and visions for all sorts of things, politics, you know, all the, you know, da, 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 everything. And I didn't really care. And I realized the only reason why, like I cared about this one is because it was my child and it was her name. And it brought me into such a deep repentance with the Lord saying, God, you've been talking to me about all sorts of things for years. And it just didn't matter to me. I mean, it was just not on my radar. And so I repented and then started a whole new saga with the Lord of writing everything down. Please, when God communicates with you in anything, in anything, write it down, hold it sacred, go deeper in that mystery and something greater than you would ever expect will unravel. So that all was unplanned, but I believe God wanted at least one person here (laughs) to know that there's a greater destiny in the communications that he is giving. But I would say it's a word for everybody, that there's a greater destiny in God's communications with you. Take it seriously and go deeper. So with, with, with today, I was praying and, you know, I'm in the kitchen and the Lord gives me this vision that all of a sudden I am under the shower and just, just water is, is cascading over me. And he says, be washed in the word. And I was like, yes, Lord, I understand. That is what I need to communicate today. And so we're going to do a little visualization right now. Okay. I want you guys all to close your eyes. And I want you to go over and turn the faucet on. And I want you to imagine being under just a, a, a nice, warm, heated shower. And feel, feel how, you know, that warmth, it heals aches. Feel, you know, how it, it's, it's massaging, it's refreshing, it's cleansing. And then hear the Lord at that moment saying, be washed by the word. Okay, you can open your eyes now. I just, that's something that I really want, you know, when Leslie was talking about seeds today, I want that seed to be in you today. Be washed by the word, okay? Now we're gonna go, a little bit deeper because look, God will not give impressions that are not based on the word. It's, you're always going to find it in the word. If you do not find it in the word, ignore it. Okay. You don't want deception, little bitty deception coming into your life, right? If you cannot find it, you ignore it. Then maybe you'll, you'll find someone who can show you in the word, but 
find it in the word. So praise the Lord. Everybody take out your, your Bibles and go to Ephesians 5. So Ephesians 5, 25 through 27. I'm just going to read that out loud. Again, it's Ephesians 5, 25 through 27. And it says, Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word that he might present her to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. Praise the Lord, I found it in the word, right? I, I found it. And at that moment, I could have stopped right there. Ah, found in the word, okay, well, let's talk about being washed in the word. But no, there's something deeper, when you actually go into the scripture in the context, Paul's talking about marriage, okay? And he's saying, husbands, you need to be like Christ. And now what is Christ doing here? And I want everybody to kind of zoom in to verse 26, right? Because that's, that's really the crux of, of what we're talking about today. It was that Christ might sanctify and clean, cleanse her with the washing of water by the word. That's what Christ does, with his word, he sanctifies and he cleanses us. It's so beautiful. Now, I could have stopped there. But there are the original languages. And I do not want anybody to be intimidated by the original languages. There's a blueletterbible.com, my favorite go-to place. It is so easy. I'm going to say it again, blueletterbible.com. You can look up any verse. You can go to the original language. I have had people say all sorts of stuff, you know, kind of dissing and downing going into the original language. No, uh-uh. They're in error. Everybody should be encouraged to go deeper. And in that depth, guess what I was able to see? So what, when I look at verse 26, there I would say there's about three words that I think are absolutely important to understand. And the first and foremost one is washing. We understand that the water here is the word of God, right? But what is this washing? What does that look like? Well, you go into the Greek and it is, it's lutron, and you don't have to even worry about pronunciations because they have a little button that you can press and you can hear how to pronounce it correctly, okay? And in that, guess what it means? It means bathing, bath, the act of bathing. Now, technically, when I saw that vision, I mean, and I think of washing, it is like every other word in the New Testament that a course bends to washing. It's more like getting dirt off, right? It's an external thing. But here, this Greek word is only used twice in all of the New Testament, and it is bathing. This is immersion. Look, that vision of the shower, the Lord used a shower because I don't take baths, okay? But the thing is, is you get under that shower and you, you have to see the water keeps on building and building and building and you will be immersed in the word. That word will become your covering. I wouldn't have understood that unless I went into the original languages. And so that bathing, oh my goodness, I want you guys to even think of this again. That bathing that soaking in the word. And I, I, and I wanna um, make a point. Like at the end, I felt the Lord very distinctly tell me that I was to speak the word over all of you. Now it's very interesting because what I have seen the majority of time 
is people will speak the word, but it's all about you. You know, God will never leave you or forsake you, which is true, okay? But it, it happens to be all about, they're taking little verses, right? And they're applying it to us, which are promises, which are hallelujah, which yes, bathe yourself in it. But there is something about just the pureness of the word to be bathed in the word. That is not about you. It's about God. And it's about how we are to conduct ourselves while looking at God. It's about how we are to walk while we're representing God. It is all about God. So even a prophetic word, even whatever you want to say, whatever, whatever, if it's not in the end about God, even me with the Haggai Project, the Lord has showed me that if people would just pray the word for three months, there's a promise in Haggai that people will thrive. But that thriving is still not about the person. Now, I can testify how I have started thriving in every area of my life, and I keep circling upward and upward and upward, and the Lord keeps blowing my mind, but it's not about me. It's about him, and I'm thriving so I can be better positioned in him to bless others and to bring his kingdom here so People get saved, people get healed, people get delivered, and Christians start being so, stop being so weak and stop, start actually being warriors and what they've been called to do and that those books that the Lord had written for each of us before we were born, that they would actually be fulfilled. I'm kind of being a little, I don't want to get too rough, right? But we are here to fulfill what God you know, we are here to fulfill what God wrote in our books before we were born. We are not here to wimp out, to compromise, to get, you know, defeated just because we fell once or twice or whatever. God has provided everything for us because it's all about him. He wrote that in the book because he has a strategy. And if we align with that strategy, then his will comes to pass on this earth and all these blessings come. I mean, God is not calling us, you are a workhorse and you're just gonna do what I say. No, the devil does that. And you can see when people are just absolutely, you know, the devil has them and trapped them. That's a spiral downward, and you see that decay. And there's no reward in that. But God, when you align with him, he is a rewarder. <laughs> there's rewards in heaven. There's rewards here. You know, it's so fun. But again, it's not about the reward. That's just understanding him. It's about him. And so, you know, as, as we even talk about here being washed in the word, that word is because it's about him. And we want to, as believers, as people who want to fulfill everything that the Lord has called us to do on this earth, the way to do that is to be intimate with him. Now, you know, and Leslie alluded to this, you know, by, by the blood of Jesus, we are cleansed. We are righteous before God. We can come before the throne boldly. I mean, we have so much through the blood, okay? But now there's the washing of the word, which is also called the water. When Jesus was on the cross, you know, water spilled out, right? And, and his blood spilled out. His water spilled out when the sword went in him, right? And, and, and blood spilled out. That water, that word so important. We need to come to a place where we bathe ourselves in the word and we'll get so much victory, so much cleansing. So if we go, it says, look, Christ has done this and he's asking the husbands to wash the, the wives in the word, but we are the bride, whether male or female, we're all the bride of Christ. So Christ is saying for the bride of Christ to be washed by the word. But what does it says? He might sanctify and cleanse. So going in the Greek, 
when we look in the Greek, sanctify means to separate from profane things and dedicate to God. And then the cleanse means to make clean, cleanse. So this is far more than taking a good old bath and getting wrinkled, right? This is God having us bathe in the world. And yes, when you bathe, you do get wrinkled, right? Because there's an exchange. We, we are in that bath of the word. And by being in that bath, that's how we separate ourselves from the wor- world. That's how we separate ourselves from the profane things. A lot of people try to, they're struggling with something, they know something's not right, this, 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 or they feel a lot of demonic attack attack because there's people in this earth that have aligned with the demonic and they're releasing curses, whatever, whatever, whatever. But the way for us to be separated from all those profane things and to be dedicated to God and to be absolutely cleansed is to bathe in the word. So now what does that mean? Play the word in your house. That means grab an app, get a solid movie that's only word-based, like however you need to interact. God, yes, Read the word, hallelujah, and speak it forth. But maybe you're not there yet. I'm just not saying, like, some some people aren't there yet. Get that app when you sleep. That's what that's what we do in our family. We have an app, and of course, our kids want the more, you know, movie theatrical uh, audio. But we're like, we can't sleep through that. So we get the most monotone one. And we play the word of God as we sleep then during the day we have the word of god playing in at least one of our rooms that is a washing it's a washing of the household it's a washing of the atmosphere i mean come on okay let's be serious how many of you guys have the tv playing all day i mean i know a lot of people that all they do is they have the tv playing and that's just junk coming out of there And I'm sorry, sometimes even out of the Christian channels, there's a little junk. But you know what? You will never get any junk from the direct word of God. So I humbly posit to you to please start today. Start playing the word of God in your households. Now, when we were talking about also, there's a little bit of deliverance. Yes, probably if, if, if different people in your household are not aligned with the Lord, they may start manifesting. Hallelujah. <laughs> and then, praise the Lord, the Lord will t- show you what to do. It may be under your breath, you go, in the name of Jesus, you are bound. You shall not manifest in front of me or in this household. Or there may be a, 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 an ample time where there's an ability for them to be delivered and then, and then to be filled. You have to follow the Holy Spirit and that would take too long to explain all that stuff tonight. But what I'm saying is start with, you don't know what's in your household until you do a cleaning, you know, until you shine the light, right? And the word of God is a light. And if you start having the word of God instead of television, instead of radio, playing in your house, but you let the word of God go forth, get the entertain, entertaining one with all the, you know, the ritzel ditzels and the, you know, the great audio and the, and the sounds of the door openings and whatever, but it's still the word of God. And you'll start bathing in there. Such a protection and cleansing will come. You will start noticing that you're going to have to start making choices. Because the Lord will highlight that which is profane in your house, that which has, is profane in what you've been doing, that which is profane, and then you'll have the choice. Are you going to choose him? Or, or do you choose the enemy? And my prayer is, is that in that moment of choice, all of you will choose God, that you will be humble enough to choose the Lord. 
So when we talk about the prophetic and we talk about all of all of this, yes, the Lord, you know, praise the Lord gave me this vision for this word. But what's what what's really important, the basis of it is if you yourself, if your soul is not clean, that word that comes out of your soul is going to be dirty as your soul. Unless the Lord really miraculously, you know, squashes all, all that, all that stuff within you. Okay. So then how do you get cleansed? Okay. We have all the victory through the blood, but how do we get cleansed? It's the washing of the word, but it's not mere washing. It's the soaking in it. Okay. Now the next step in that soaking is then you begin to pray. So like now, nowadays, you know, I cannot read the word without praying the word. I mean, it's just impossible now because I'm interacting with the Lord and he's either highlighting something about me or something else that I needed to pray into. And it's something where it becomes this, this interaction with God, but it's alignment. And so when you're aligned with God and you're aligned with his word, oh my goodness, for the Haggai Project, you start building yourself as a house of prayer as you begin praying the word because we are the temple of God. But what are you filling your temple with? Is it something where, you know, Jesus needs to go through like he did, you know, in, in the gospel where he said, you, well, <laughs> he was pretty rough, right? And he was pretty violent. He called everybody in that temple thieves and robbers. He was not happy. And he whipped a couple people. So when you look at yourself, and this is not condemning. This is just, hey, let's just get real. And let's just get intimate with God, right? When you look at yourself, are there certain things that God would... Woo, woo, woo. <laughs> you know, and I'm sure there will be some things where the Lord is like, hey, great job, you know. But our goal is to be completely cleansed. And so how are we going to get that cleansing? Yes, someone might get a visitation from the Lord, but you know what? It's probably going to be through his word. <laughs> Most likely... Highest percentage of believers, you're going to encounter the cleansing of God through the word. And that's why we have to be in it. And I'm not saying you have to do like, you know, how many chapters you think is too much. One verse. Two verses a day. And cleanse yourself with the word. I would say have it going on all the time in the house because you can always pick up stuff on your drives, you know, not out of religiousness because you just really want the Lord and you want to bathe in him, right? But that is this beautiful thing where then you can pray the word. So I'm just going to give an example of praying the word, right? I've been focused, you know, we zoomed in into um, Ephesians 5, 25 through 27, but then we really zoomed in to verses 26, we went into the original languages, so we got a deeper understanding and context of that verse. So from there, now we can pray it because we have understanding. Okay, so I'm going to pray that for us, for all of us. Lord, we come before you and we thank you so much. Thank you for communicating with us, Lord God. Thank you for sharing your heart. Thank you for saying to us this is important to you and that you want all of us to do this. You want us all to be washed by your word. You want us all to make the choice to bathe. Yes, Lord, you say husbands do this for wives and that you have done this for the church, but you know, as your bride, we can also make the decision to have intention in putting us under the word, in putting us, Lord God, to a place of encountering to your word so that we bathe in it, so that we soak, so that we are fully immersed. And Lord, that's where we want to be. 
We want to be fully immersed in you. We do not be, want to be immersed in this world. We do not, Lord God, want to have be, be even closely connected to anything of the demonic. We reject the kingdom of darkness. And in fact, if there's any kingdom of darkness that is active and working in our lives, we ask you to expose it and that you would give us the answer, Almighty Father, in your word in how to handle it, get rid of it. But we know it all first comes with repentance and that's changing our mind. And so, Lord God, today we change our mind concerning your word. We repent for the times that we have rejected it taken it for granted, allowed other things to be more important than your word, that we've minimalized it, that we've only taken it out for a bless me type scenario. No, Lord God, this is all about you. And it's all about us getting to know you so we can be like you to this world and draw people unto you and to fulfill your kingdom strategies. And so, Lord God, we thank you that this day we cho choose to bathe in the word. And we thank you, Lord God, that as we bathe in the word, every profane thing will be absolutely rejected from our lives and that we will be dedicated and sanctified unto you. We thank you, Almighty Father, that, Lord, that being bathed is going to allow us to be fully cleansed, fully cleansed of attitudes, fully cleansed of ungodly emotions, fully cleansed of any rebellious will, that we would have a fully cleansed soul and that we can rightly divide your word with that soul and with that intimacy and with your spirit. And then we can continue to build ourselves as a house of prayer by praying your word because we are fully immersing ourselves in your word. We thank you for this, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, every time I pray like the word, I don't know how long it's going to be, right? Because you get, you get propelled by the spirit and all of a sudden he's showing you things like hit this point, hit this point, hit this point, hit this point. And every time, like... I could pray this like a week from now and I would pray it completely different because the Lord has something different that needs to be released or, 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 or digested. And so I just want to encourage all of you guys. And I hope this is, this has been encouraging, you know, but, oh, God's so good. And he, He's coming back for a bride, and it actually, in verses 27, it talks about that bride. He's going to present to himself the glorious church, which is the bride, not having a spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. How does the bride get to that point? And it's a really funny thing. I've always said that I've been in bride prep, like Everything God ever has called me to do has always been for the bride, concerning the bride. And that's why building oneself as a house of prayer by praying the word is actually building that holy and blameless bride. That's why it's the next prayer movement. So I want to reemphasize this, that the message that I have and that, that vision that the Lord gave me and then the scripture that the Lord now has, has, um, you know, given depth to, it's all about the bride and the next movement of the prayer movement that he's calling his bride to. Jesus is not coming back. The bride is not prepared yet. 
But you know how you're going to prepare yourself? Is by praying the word. By bathing in the word. And from bathing in that word, beginning to interact with the word. And I, I want to reemphasize that bathing that I was talking about. Part of that bathing is going deeper. Part of that bathing is going to the original languages. Part of that bathing may be to read a couple commentaries. You know, part of that bathing, because you're soaking, you're soaking it in, you're getting all the wisdom, you're hearing from the Holy Spirit. That's a bathing in the word. So you know what? A week from now, or maybe 10 years from now, my prayer is that you would remember this day so that at any time the Lord calls you to share something, if someone's going through something, how do you keep your deliverance? Or how do you keep your healing? Or all this, all this stuff, right? The end solution, the end game will always be the word and praying the word. So I think I could go on and on, but I think, I, I think you guys have heard what the Lord desires and the next level that he's calling all of you to. And unfortunately, you're gonna be responsible for this before him. So <laughs> I, I, think you just better, I think you just better start. <laughs> Because now when you're saying, oh, I feel the demonic, and well, have you uh, been bathing in the word? You know, if, if, if there's certain things going on, the question is, well, have you been bathing in the word? Okay, so now I'm just gonna have you guys close your eyes and I'm gonna bathe you in the word. So I prayed about it, and the Lord brought me to Luke 6, 27. And so I'm just going to do this for the next five minutes. So picture yourself with Jesus, <laughs> with the water of his word cascading upon you and filling a tub. And you were interacting with him. You were absorbing this word in your soul. You were checking your soul, finding out, ooh, am I aligned with this or am I not? Do I need to make any changes? Where can I actually implement this? Let the Lord speak to you at this moment. But I say to you who hear, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. And pray for those who spitefully use you. To him who strikes you on the one cheek, offer the other also. And from him who takes away your cloak, do not withhold your tunic either. Give to everyone who asks of you. And from him who takes away your goods, do not ask them back. And just as you want men to do to you, you also do to them likewise. But if you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. And if you lend to those from whom you hope to receive back, what credit is that to you? For even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much back. But love your enemies. Do good and lend, hoping for nothing in return. And your reward will be great. And you will be sons of the Most High. For he is kind to the unthankful and evil. Therefore, be merciful, 
just as your Father also is merciful. Judge not, and you shall not be judged. Condemn not, and you shall not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over, will be put into your bosom. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. Can the blind lead the blind? Will they not both fall into the ditch? A disciple is not above his teacher, but everyone who is perfectly trained will be like his teacher. And why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but do not perceive the plank in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, brother, let me remove the speck that is in your eye, when you yourself do not see the plank that is in your own eye? Hypocrite. First remove the plank from your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck that is in your brother's eye. For a good tree does not bear bad fruit, nor does a bad tree bear good fruit. For every tree is known by its own fruit. For men do not gather figs from thorns nor do they gather grapes from a bramble bush. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good, and an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth evil. For out of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaks. So this was a light example of being washed by the word. Praise the Lord. I can feel the hunger in the room and I can feel the pulling online because there's no time and distance in the spirit and we know that. So those on that are at home or watching from wherever you're watching, you're with us also, but I can feel you pulling and Jesus promises us in Matthew, the book of Matthew, that the hungry always get fed. So we don't have to beg our God. There's many gods in the world. I, you know, little gods with the little G and I've seen, I've traveled all over the world and I've seen people do all kinds of crazy, crazy things for their gods, you know, and we've read about them. Maybe you've even seen what they do for their gods, how they sacrifice and what they do for their gods, getting their gods to respond. But our God is the only God, the living God that spreads a table for us, his children and says, come and eat, come and dine. And he promises us that we will be fed with the living word, the living bread, he himself who gave his only begotten son. We don't have to love you. I loved you before you were even born. I love you. I sent my only begotten son. Love has been provided and there's supplication at this table. So I can feel the hunger, the pull of the hunger and the desire for more. And it has been provided. There has been a deposit here. So it is up to us. It's not an unfortunate un- event. I feel like there has been an answer provided. I felt like there was questions like, what is the next move? And God came here and de- brought a deposit from Natasha, our sister in the Lord, through her ministry to us. Like, here is the answer. I see a hand on a door. It's for somebody online, but somebody here had a hand like on a doorknob, like, where is the door? I don't know the next move. And I hear Jesus say, I am the door. I am the door. Encounter him through the word, and you're going to get that question, that answer that you've been asking for. So raise your hands. 
I bless you as the good soil that the seed has gone into and there will be no seed snatching. The enemy is not going to come in and snatch one seed that has been sown into the soil of your heart. I bless you. You're going to be good producers and you're going to produce fruit with good seed on it. And you're going to, I speak multiplication, supernatural multiplication on what has been sown into the seed, the soil of your heart today. And you're going to be able to feed others just from what was spoken today. I bless you. And in particular, I bless your homes and your families in the name above all name, the mighty name of Jesus Christ. May he always be exalted in you and 